The island of Solo had been hit by strong winds, making life difficult for the engines. Trains were often delayed, if not cancelled due to line obstructions. One evening, as the gale howled outside, the big engines were huddled in the shed, accompanied by Daisy, the diesel railcar. The wind is so strong, she said. It ripped the crossing gates right off their posts. Poor Thomas, he was still being rerailed when I was ordered to stay here tonight. I hear his front end was damaged something awful. Pa, sniffed Gordon. Count on a small engine to be impeded by a few toothpicks. Before Daisy could reply, Henry came backing into the shed, grumbling dreadfully. The kipper's been cancelled, he fumed. Bother, I was looking forward to a nice evening run. Not you too, Henry, groaned Gordon. I'd expect this from Thomas, but we're big engines! A little wind shouldn't stop us! Fat controller's orders, Gordon, Henry retorted. He doesn't think the vans can withstand the strength of the gusts. You're being silly, Henry, Gordon yawned. You watch me tomorrow. I'll be right on schedule, whatever the weather. With that, he fell asleep, leaving Henry brooding. Though still strong, the winds had lessened by morning. Gorn had just left on his first express boat, but he was not enjoying himself. Speed restrictions were in place, and no matter how fast he tried to go, his driver held him back. Calm down, Gordon! scolded his driver. I've already got the storms to worry about! I don't need you trying to buck me out of the cab! It's shameful! It's shameful! Gordon grunted, and begrudgedly slowed down as the wind swelled around him. Leading up to Edward Station, the main line is surrounded by farmers' fields. One farmer who worked closer to the line had recently built a small shed for his equipment. He was pleased with his handwork, but didn't realize how light the structure was. Too easily, the strong winds picked up the shed and blew it across the field. Gorn was beginning to feel uncomfortable. The winds had picked up again, and cold rain stung his face as he forged along the line. Ugh, I can't see a thing, he groaned. Ugh, that makes two of us, old boy, grunted the driver. If we could just make it... Good grief, what's that? Gordon cracked open his eyes. A dark shape loomed on the line ahead. The driver slammed the brakes. Gordon put all of his weight and strength into stopping, but the heavy coaches pushed him along the damp rails. He shut his eyes and... The remnants of the wooden shed clung to his front end, which was feeling rather sore. When the winds died down again, James came to take the express to the end of the line. With Edward banking him up the hill, the only engines available to help Gordon were Bill and Ben. You're a sight for sore eyes, teased Ben. Ben buffers, warm brakes, that's not the way of a proper express engine. <laughs> By the looks of it, he wouldn't even make a proper shed, laughed Bill. Gordon felt too worn out to retort. He was moved to a siding at Edward Station, mournfully waiting to be taken to the works. He soon found himself being shunted onto Henry's goods train. Well, 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 chuckled Henry. You were on schedule, all right. Be careful in future, will you? I'd much rather see you heading the express than housing tools. For once, Gordon felt Henry's words were worth heeding.